Hello everyone and welcome to Novato Tuts Plus tutorial. I'm Adi Pordillo and today we're gonna have a closer look at responsive resizing and constraints in Adobe XD. Uh, these are some new features added in the September 2018 release. So we're gonna play around with them and see if they're any good. Now this tutorial will be divided in three parts. First, we'll have a look at how we were creating responsive elements before this update. Then we'll see how the new responsive resizing works. And finally, we'll discuss about element constraints, what they do and when you should use them. So to demonstrate these new features, I got a, um, a wireframing kit from Envato Elements. It's called the Bones iOS Wireframe Kit. And it has a bunch of screens we can use. Let's take, for example, this first screen. I'm gonna copy and paste it into a, uh, a new document here. And let's take a look at how we would create this responsive layout uh, before the update. So let's say that I have uh, this screen size, but then I want to make it a little bit bigger maybe something like this. So I resized my artboard and now what I have to do is go to each individual element and simply move it in its correct position. I gotta check, uh, you know, what kind of distance we have in here compared to my other elements. Then for this one, I gotta bring it to the middle and then I gotta take this and bring it to the middle. And I gotta resize these, right? And every time I do this, I gotta check if um, my margins here are correct. Same goes for the buttons. Now maybe you want to make these bigger. I gotta check the sizes here, the width. It's 877, I gotta make this 877. And then I gotta realign the text and all that. So it takes a little bit of work to go from here to here. And because we have to do this manually, we're wasting a lot of time, time that we can spend doing more important things like uh, thinking about, uh, you know, I'm just giving an example here, thinking about typography and colors and uh, the actual content and usability and stuff like that. Uh, but instead, we're wasting it reordering, re-aligning um, elements, resizing elements, when, where uh, all of this can be easily done by the computer for us. And if it's automatic, we're going to save a lot of time, right? Well, this is what these new features in XD are all about, automation, right? Um, <clears throat> there is a lot of, um, of thought put into this. And Adobe XD is very smart. It has this responsive resizing feature that basically does what I did automatically. So it's gonna save you a bunch of time. Now, let's see how the responsive resizing works. So to see this in action, I'm gonna delete this artboard. I'm gonna duplicate it. And right here in the inspector, you're gonna find a toggle called the responsive resize. And we're gonna make sure we select the entire artboard and check that off. Now, here's where it gets very interesting. If I resize my artboard now, look at that. Look at how easy that is. So it's basically doing what I did, but it's doing so automatically. And XD is very smart about this because it applies uh, these constraints that I'm gonna talk about later by um, you know taking a look at your composition, analyzing the elements you have selected or the elements in your composition, uh, how they're grouped, uh, how close they are to the edges of the artboard or their parent group, and it makes the necessary calculations for you. And as I was resizing, I think you saw some pink lines. 
So check, the, check these out. They're around the logo here in the center. They're around my top bar there. They're around all of these elements and you can see lines going from them to the edges. Well, these are, um, we'll call them crosshairs. And they're basically showing you how the constraints work. So in my example, uh, this email field, for example, has uh, these crosshairs to the right and to the left of it. And they connect the element to the edges of my artboard. That means uh, we have constraints linking that email field to both edges. So when the edges are going to change, the, uh, the element that is bound to those edges will change as well, which is just fantastic. Same goes for vertical. Notice when I change things vertically, my elements change as well. And all of this is possible because I simply checked a little box here. Now, this is super useful for when you want to create, for example, uh, a tablet size or a smartphone size, right? Let's say that uh, this is your smartphone size and you want to duplicate it and create a tablet size, okay? Let's say, I don't know, I'm going to check off responsive resize and let's say I want a width of 1200 by 2000, okay? And simply by doing that, all of your elements stay in the correct place. Well, for most part, uh, it really depends on your each individual project. If some of them uh, do not behave properly, like for example, these uh, have been positioned slightly differently than they were here. Uh, one quick way to fix that is to simply group them up, right? Make sure responsive resize is on. And now when you resize, yeah, you'll see that those grouped elements will stay together. Same goes for this. And if you want like all of these to behave in the same way, you just group them up as well. And now upon resize, they will all stick to the very bottom. So right off the bat, responsive resizing works like a charm. It's really an amazing job they did here with, uh, with this new version of XD. Now, if for some reason you want to manually tweak those settings to um, maybe position some elements differently, you can do that as well with manual constraints. So let's have a look at those next. Let's take a look at uh, another example here. Uh, let's grab this number 12. Okay, also from the uh, kit I got from Envato Elements. And let's take a look at what happens when I resize this. Make sure you activate responsive resize. Okay, now pretty much all the elements behaved correctly. They resized correctly, they were positioned correctly, but there are a few who fell short of that. Particularly, this follow button along with the tabs should be sticking to the, uh, to the top part or to this uh, header image. Also, the text should be positioned in relation to this image here. So let's go ahead and make those changes happen. By default, this is set to auto responsive resize, but let's go into manual. And here we have a set of controls, right? We can determine whether or not we have a fixed width and height. Currently we have a fixed height, uh, but we don't have a fixed width. So when we resize our artboard, yeah, that button resizes as well. And also, we fixed it to the left and to the right. So when we resize, we basically resize the element as well in relation to the left and right margins or edges. Now, I'm gonna add a constraint here. 
and I'm going to say fix top. So when I resize this vertically, my element now stays fixed to the top instead of just going to the bottom like these other elements. Let's do the same for these manual. Let's fix that to the top. And let's also select the content here. Let's go to manual and we'll fix it to the left instead of to the right. And this one has a fixed width and height. We'll do the same here. So now when I resize, it's almost perfect, but these still need to be fixed to the top. So let's go ahead and select them. Manual, top instead of bottom, fix height. And now when I resize, everything stays exactly where it should. Now, speaking of constraints, uh, you can do something very interesting here. So for example, let's delete this uh, second line and let's make a repeat grid out of this one, right? And let me actually, oops, uh, revert back to, uh, to a normal state like that. Okay, so let's delete this and let's make this a repeat grid. And let's change the distance here. So when we resize this, uh, our repeat grid is set responsive resize to auto. If we go to manual, you'll see that it has all the crosses checked. So it's gonna resize both horizontally and vertically. And make sure you set uh, for the parent element as well. Make sure you, uh, you set both top and bottom. So now when you resize, you'll get additional content there. And of course, that also happens when you go this way. This may or may not be what you want, but you know, it's a repeat grid. So you can basically just go in here and increase the size of this. So you'll only get a single, uh, a single row. It's just an idea. You can play around with it. But the point is with this responsive resizing and constraints that were introduced in this latest update, um, XD makes a possibly very tedious job be very simple. So when creating screens or uh, adapting your app to different screen dimensions, before it was a very tedious job, a lot of um, going back and forth, copy paste, resize, rearrange, uh, realign. But with this update, pretty much everything is done automatically. And for the things that Adobe or XD does not get right, on the first try, you can go into manual mode and change those bits uh, yourself. It's really, really awesome, a big time saver. And um, yeah, that's a quick look at responsive resizing and manual constraints in Adobe XD in this latest, uh, latest update, September 2018. Uh, I think it's a huge time saver, not just for creating responsive layouts, but for simple things as well, like creating a button uh, with like a fixed top and bottom padding and with the text always sitting in the middle. Uh, it wasn't like especially hard to do before, but now it's even simpler. Um, let me actually show you how you do that, right? So let's create an artboard here. I have a rectangle and inside I have a text, right? Now let's give this a uh, color, right? So we're gonna put this in the middle, group it up, make sure responsive resize is set to enable. And now we have a nice button. It also works vertically as well. And we increase the size of this button a little just to, uh, to hint XD that, look, this is supposed to be like almost full size. So when we resize it, it's gonna be like that. You saw just how easy it was 
uh, and I'm absolutely stoked about uh, these new changes. Can't wait to uh, to work more with these and uh, see just how much time they uh, they save. Well, that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, let us know down in the comments what do you think about these new changes that came to Adobe XD. Uh, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I'm Adi Pordila. Until next time, take care.